Hello, this video is going to be a visual effects breakdown slash tutorial on how I did the effects from my Green Lantern video that I uploaded several weeks ago. Camera change, boom. I'm going to cut this up into two videos. The first video, which is obviously this one that you're watching at the moment, is going to be the 3D side of it, so I'll talk about the stuff that I did in Blender. And then part two will be focusing on the compositing, which I'll go through in Nuke. The reason I'm splitting it into two is there's a lot to talk about in each section and I don't want to make a 45 minute video. I think it would be better to do two videos that are like 20 minutes each. I'm going to start by talking about this shot, which is obviously the one that has the suit up in it. I actually made the Green Lantern asset from scratch. So before we do any of the animation or anything, I'm going to talk very briefly about how I made it, just in case anyone is interested. I started off just by using a generic model of a human male and then from there I did a bit of sculpting just to make it look a bit more like my body instead of a generic person which essentially just meant making it shorter and getting rid of some of the muscles. I should really try and get away from my desk more. From there I unwrapped the model and started working on the image textures which makes up the majority of the look of this 3D model. I started by creating a black and white matte which would define which parts of the suit are green and which parts are black. And then later on when the shader gets more complicated, I can plug this into the factor input and that will allow me to have control over the two different textures of the different parts of the model that are green and black. From there I just set up the two different colours, so the green was just a flat green for now. And for the black I used a seamless scales texture. I thought this just added some nice micro detail into that area of the suit as it was going to have less of the sculpting of the muscles. After that I made two additional image textures which I used mainly to define the highlights and the shadows of the model. This is a little bit like baking the lighting in the scene onto an image texture. I wanted to create some more definition in the look of the model, so I basically hand painted the areas that I thought would catch the light and the bits that I thought would be occluded and causing shadow on the model, and then I combined them over the top of the original green and black texture, which then added a lot of definition to the suit. Once that was done, I did the most complicated part, which was hand painting all of the lines. I turned on symmetry so that I only had to paint half of the model, and from there I painstakingly drew all the lines on one at a time. I multiplied some noise over the top of them to break them up a bit to make them look a bit more organic and then I used this in the shader to drive an emission shader for the lines so that they would glow. The cherry on top was I found this muscle fibre texture that I used and hand painted this with stencils onto the areas of the model that I thought needed it. If you look at stills from the film, the suit has a very organic looking muscle fibre texture over the whole thing. It almost looks like a layer of skin instead of a suit on top of a body. So I made this custom fibre texture and then used it going into a bump map and a few other things to add some extra surface detail onto the model. Once that was done it was just a case of putting the Green Lantern logo on the chest and then rigging it and then it was ready to go and start the animation. To make the head, obviously I wanted it to look like my head. So to start off I photo scanned my face using an app called Kiri Engine, who are the sponsor of today's video. I'll talk more about them later in the video. So I took a load of photos of my face from the front and the sides and then I combined them in the app and downloaded the photo scan of my face. I didn't actually use the mesh of the photo scan for the final model, but what I used it for is to overlay it with the generic man 3D model head. So then I could see very clearly the areas of the face that I needed to sculpt to make it more like the shape of my face. And then from there I did four hair particle systems for the top of my hair, the side of my hair, my eyebrows and my beard. And then finally made a fairly rough texture for the colour of my face. This Green Lantern 3D model and also the Green Lantern lamp and all the Blender files with the animation of the suit up and the CG street and everything are all available on my Patreon. So if you're interested go and check it out, it really helps to support what I do and keep me making videos like this for you guys. And so from there that kind of brings us back to where we started. There were lots of questions on the video about how I did this and also people asking in the Discord server. The answer is actually fairly straightforward, it's mostly hand animated and I also did a couple of one point tracks on my arms that I parented the IK wrist bones to, so really there's no magic to it, it's just a bit of a slow process. I found the easiest way to do it was to go into wireframe mode and then I could see the footage coming underneath and I could also see the outline of the suit and the 3D model. And then I started on some of the stronger frames like this where I was in a really defined pose. And then I would jump into pose mode, grab the bones and just move them around and put them in the right place and set a keyframe. And then I would go back to a pose like this where I'm in a different position and set the pose here, set another keyframe and then you can slowly go through, block out all the main poses and then do the in-between animations between the keyframes just to refine it. Once all the animation was locked in I went through and did a corrective sculpting pass. This is done using shape keys and it allows you to accommodate for areas where the rigging and the weight painting doesn't quite work. For example with pretty much any rig of a person, if you raise the arms above the head the shoulders will generally start to look quite weird. So when the arms are raised you can sculpt the shoulders to look natural again and then you can animate the shape key throughout the shot to maintain the natural look of the shoulders for the whole thing. For the tracking of the arms it was really straightforward, all I did is brought the footage into the movie clip editor and then I did one point tracks for my hands, so I did one on here and I did one on my tattoo just because it's quite a good tracking marker. So just to show you this very quickly, if I hide this one we can do it again. So add a tracking marker by holding control and clicking and then literally control T to track forward, 
and then you can do control shift T to track backwards. That's not the whole thing, but let's just imagine it is. And then from here, you can go to solve, open the geometry tab and press link empty to track. And if I click this and we go into the 3D view, or as you can see over here, I'll just close this, it's created an empty here in 3D space. You can press G to move it back and forward. It only moves in the axis to and from away from the camera. So you can only move it in one direction essentially. So I just moved it until it was lined up with the model like this. You can scale it down a little bit. And then obviously now you have the movement and you can see that the empty is moving with my hand. So all you have to do from here is go into pose mode and select one of the bones. I rigged this model with IK bones. So whenever the wrist moves, it moves all the other bones in the arm, as you can see here. So I selected the wrist bone. That's the IK bone that's controlling everything. Go to the bone constraints menu and you add a child of constraint. So I sack this off and we just add a new one. Child of. Then for the target, you want to set it to be the empty. So this is called object track four. We'll just track four. And then you press set inverse to make sure it's set on the correct frame. And then if I play through, you can see that the hand is actually moving with the empty. I've got some extra keyframes on top of this where I just refined the animation, but for the most part, this gave me a lot of it automatically. So I didn't have to manually move it for every single frame. I also obviously animated the head. As you can see, it roughly follows my head movement. This was really tricky to get it to line up exactly with my head in the footage. And I'll talk more about that a bit later in this video and maybe in the compositing video. I got it more or less as close as I could do in 3D. And then I did a bit of compositing hacks to just make it work and get it to really stick nicely on the footage as well. This is the nuke script for this shot. I'm not really gonna go into depth in it, but I'll just show you what the render looks like. So I rendered the suit like this. So as you can see, there is actually no head on it. What I did for the render is I set the head of the 3D model to be a holdout. So what this means if I go into render view is that the geometry of the head actually occludes the suit. So you can see, you can't see the back of the suit where the neckline is here because it's been cut out by this 3D head. If I hide this, you can see you can actually see the back of the suit. So basically what this serves to do is make a hole for where the live action head should be so that it should match up fairly well with my actual head in the footage, which should look something like this. There. So that's more or less how it works. So anyway, that's that one. Let's talk about the other shot. I should say other shots because there's a few. Let's do the one with the lamp at the beginning. This one was kind of fun. There's obviously all the particles coming out of here. We have the 3D model of the lamp, which I made, which I think looks really nice. This is basically broken down into a few layers. The first one is the lamp, and then I did two particle systems. So we've got like a kind of an initial particle system, which is the stuff going into the ring, which is this kind of middle bit here, as you can see. And then I did a second one, which is much wider particles, which just kind of float around. If I show you the comp, that's all of this kind of secondary stuff that's just floating around outside of the main beam. I just set up an emitter inside of the lamp here, and there's just obviously a particle system on each. I turned the gravity right down to zero so that they don't fall off the screen. They just float around. The way I got them to follow this curve is I added a path, which is here, and this has a curve guide force field set up on it. The way to do that is you can come down to force fields, add a curve guide, which is this. The way this works is the particles start at one end and just make their way to the other. Based on their lifetime, they will move quicker or slower. You can change things like the fall off power, which means they will either be tighter or further away from the curve and it will have a kind of softer fall off. I didn't have to change too much of the settings actually. So this is what the final settings look like here. I set the minimum distance to 0 0.01. So it's quite tight and just mostly followed this line. As you can see, the end of the curve guide is moving with this empty. I did the same thing as the 3D track for the arms in the last shot where I did an object track of the ring in the footage here. And then I just parented the end of the curve guide onto this empty. The particles themselves are just quite low poly icospheres and they have a green emission shader on them, which obviously makes them glow. You can see that the final render in Nuke doesn't look anything like the just single dots that are coming out of the particle system. The actual render itself of the particles looks like this. To achieve this look, when I was rendering the particles, I set the motion blur in Blender to be much, much higher than you would for a usual shot. So if I go into the render settings, we can see that the motion blur is on two and by default in Blender it's 0.5. So I basically got four times as much motion blur as a usual shot. This really helps to make them look less like dots that are just coming out of the emitter and actually give them some kind of form and direction. And then from there, I just use some noise textures and stuff in Nuke to really mess them up, which looks something like this. So it's just distorting them, which gives it even more of that energy feel. And then I also added a glow and put it over the top of the footage. Again, I'm gonna cover this more in the compositing video next time. And then I guess finally, we should talk about the CG street. This is the bit that took the longest by far. As you can probably imagine, just because there's so much more going on and it being fully CG. Basically, I started by making the street, which was the most time consuming part. I modeled the road first of all, then blocked out the positioning for the cars and stuff, and then added the extra details later, like the street lights and the trees and the buildings. And coming back to Kiri Engine, the sponsor of today's video, I did a load of photo scans of things that I found in the streets near my house that I could put in to make it look more realistic. So here we go on a mini photo scanning adventure. Earlier when I said I don't leave my desk very much, this was one of the exceptions. I went out on the one wheel and I took my phone, my camera and my drone with me. 
and I went around the local streets near where my flat is in London and I just photo scanned a load of stuff that I thought would look good. I photo scanned a dumpster, a post box, some electrical boxes, and I also did one with my drone that didn't end up making it into the video. Maybe I'll slap that one on Patreon for you guys. Once I got back, I chucked all of the photos into the web browser. The last sponsored video I did with Curie Engine, it was just an app for your phone, which I still thought was really good. So I scanned the dumpster on my phone, but they've now launched a web page version that you can use as well, which I think is fantastic and really opens more potential. This allows you to use a DSLR so you can get higher quality pictures and obviously also a drone. So I opened up the web browser and dumped all the photos in and let it process remotely. This usually takes about half an hour and then you can download the model back to your computer. One of the nice things about it that it does by default is it gives you a high poly and a low poly version, which is great for optimizing scenes if you have stuff that's more in the background or needs to be higher detail in the foreground. You get six free credits every week and if you want to do more, they have pay as you go or subscription based plans as well. If you're into photo scanning and you haven't already, go and check out Kiri Engine. You won't be disappointed. These work really nicely to break up the straight lines and the repetitiveness of the CG street. Without them, you just have the constant repetition of the street lights and the trees. So that's all the environment stuff really. It's a combination of the stuff that I modeled myself, the photo scans, some objects that I downloaded like the cars and the trees, and then all the buildings are made from the now infamous Ian Huberk technique of loop cutting an image plane and then extruding it to make it a bit more three dimensional. Looks a bit weird from this sort of angle, but when you look at it from the floor, I think it looks really photorealistic. The trick for this, I think, was just getting the lighting and the textures right, mostly. I wanted it to be fairly wet on the floor, so you get these nice reflections of all the headlights and stuff. And then once all the blocking out of the textures and the models was done, I went in and I put some fun details in, like this bus stop that's got adverts for the Green Lantern. And this Star Wars poster is about the server Star Wars project that we've been working on for quite a while. And I also put some channel art and some memes that people suggested in the Discord server onto the bus and stuff, just for a laugh. The process of doing the animation was fairly straightforward. It was similar to the stuff that I've done for the Spider-Man video and the Treasure Planet solar surfing video that I did before as well. The animation of the character and the camera are done along two different curves. So as you can see here, the Green Lantern 3D model is following this curve and the camera has one that's similar but not quite the same so that it gets a different camera angle. You can do this by taking the camera and the rig of the 3D model and adding a follow path constraint onto it. And then with the path selected, if you go into the path animation controls, keyframing the evaluation time from zero at the start of the shot all the way up to 100, which is where the object reaches the end of the path, will animate it along the course of the shot between the two keyframes. From there, what I did is add additional rotation onto the camera and stuff. So as it's going along the path, I'm also then reframing to keep the Green Lantern fairly in frame and also making the camera angles kind of cinematic, like as it goes under the car here. And then for the Green Lantern, it's kind of the same thing. So as it's following the path, I then do additional animation onto the armature to move things like the arms and the head and just get that flying animation really locked in. For getting the lighting of the scene and everything looking nice, it's a combination of using an HDRI. It's a nighttime one and it's uh, actually of a forest in the middle of a field, but all I really wanted was the kind of starry sky up at the top. Obviously in the final render, this is transparent, so you don't see it. I did a sky replacement in Nuke with something that was much darker. So that gives the kind of general ambient lighting. And then on top of that, the rest of the lighting comes from all the practical lights in the shot. So all of these spherical street lights are emissive objects that are casting light into the scene and they pick up nice reflections in the cars and stuff as well, which looks cool. All of the street lights have actual built-in blender spotlights in them, which is these lights here. I like using these because they give you actual control over the fall off of the cone and stuff and you can control the softness as well. And then on top of this I also added just a massive area light up here which was the moonlight. For some of the shots where the lighting was more specific I'd put another one up here and it would cast some edge light or something onto the character. And I think that is pretty much everything I need to cover for the 3D parts of it. There's not really anything particularly complicated in all of this. I think what really sells a lot of the effects is just all the extras that I added in. I did some stuff like adding spotlights onto the front of the cars, which adds some really nice dynamic lighting when the cars are kind of overtaking the camera and stuff, you get the headlights kind of filling the frame with light for a couple of frames. There's a few fun things as well, like I put some low poly people on the bus, and also in the previous shot, in shot five, there is a photo scan of me sat in the bus stop wearing different clothes. This is the photo scan that I used for the Treasure Planet video with the solar surfing, and as the Green Lantern character flies past, I actually animated the photo scan to look up, as if he's heard it coming. It's all just lots of subtle details like that that make the shots come to life. I was really happy with how the video turned out. I think it went down really well. Everyone seemed to really like it, and there's been lots of requests and people bugging me for the tutorials, so here you go. You're welcome. Like I said before, all of the assets for this are on Patreon if you're interested in picking them up yourself. Part two of this, talking about the compositing in Nuke, will be coming in a week or two once I finish recording it. If you're interested in photo scanning, make sure you check out the Kiri Engine app and the website that they've just launched. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.